the time I think I'm getting back, that's something happening. See if I can do this in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I'm trying to see if I can do this in about a good 30 minutes. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians. separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Amen. Amen. And God had a blessing to the reader going to do as well. A host of oh, gracious and heavenly Father, but this is we coming for you once more, Lord. This time, God asking for power to preach and to teach your word. God, I pray that I would neither stumble nor cause one to stumble. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth truly would, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. I pray that I decrease and you increase. Let it not be my thoughts or my words, Lord. But I pray, Lord, since it is you that call me to preach, God, that you would now take this earthen vessel, Lord, for you say there's a treasure in it, God. I pray that you release that treasure to me and as well as all your people, that we would hear what thus said the Lord unto his church. Now, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you, and we give you all the glory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before I uh, go uh, into the message, uh, I want to share something. Um, uh, there have been numerous people who have either been attacked, um, sickness, or something else, um, with the body aches and pains, and uh, even myself. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, last Sunday, I actually had the privilege of standing here was feeling good, I kind of pushed my way through it, but I knew my body wasn't in a good place. Uh, and I was down for the next eight or nine days, fever, fatigue, and uh, body aches. And it's funny, if it wasn't COVID, they couldn't tell me what was wrong with me. But, but I come to realize something, um, and I just want to share this, because it actually came from my wife. She said, you should have knew something was coming. We all should knew something was coming because the moment you decide uh, that you're going to uh, preach the gospel, right. stick to the gospel and start to preach Jesus, right. then you got to know something coming. Right. Uh, we have been in the book of Galatians and we have looked at uh, the gospel and just some gospel truths. And y'all, I think the enemy is bothered and upset right. that we're crazy enough in this church to still believe that the gospel works. Uh, and I just wanted to give y'all that disclaimer because I guess as long as we're going to be preaching and listening to this, we better uh, be prepared for spiritual warfare. Yeah. Because the enemy is the enemy is not bothered when we preach our own ideas and concepts. Uh, the enemy is not frustrated or uh, moved when we preach the prosperity gospel uh, and all these other things we call gospel. 
But the enemy does get bothered when you're crazy enough to tell people that Jesus came. He lived, he died, he was buried, and he got up with all power and authority in his hand. And when you are really crazy enough to tell people that, that, that just that message in itself can actually get you saved. So y'all, let's make sure that we're, uh, we're, 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 we're prepared and ready for whatever may come. Amen. Uh, wait, amen. amen? I said 30 minutes too, didn't I? I said try though. I said I'm going to try this in 30 minutes. So let me go and cut across the field. Um, this morning, y'all, we're diving back into the book of Galatians. Uh, and as we continue our series, No Other Gospel, uh, in which we have dealt with the fact that there is no other gospel. Um, we have uh, looked at and seen how, uh, just in this series how uh, so-called Judaizers or people that we would consider false teachers had attempted to twist, pervert, and distort the true gospel. Amen. Uh, and the thing that moves me uh, in doing this series and the thing that it has compelled me to do is realize that no matter how much we think the things that we're seeing are new, that like Ecclesiastes said, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, Y'all, that's a shock moment for me because what that says is for the last 2,000 years, there has been one message that has been consistently attacked. There has been one message that has consistently been twisted, tried to be, that has attempted to be perverted and distorted because the enemy knows something about that message. See, the enemy still yet knows and believes that if anybody ever grab a hold to the gospel message, really make it real in their life, no matter how much authority he had in their life, no matter how many strongholds you were dealing with, no matter how many addictions you had, no matter how many curses was in your life, that if you ever just grab a hold to this message that God said, if you get it in its truest form and in its purest form, that it has the power to literally take you from being what you was to what you were created to be. It is something about the gospel of Jesus Christ that still yet has the power to take men who are lost and in darkness uh, and allow them to be found and then translate them into this marvelous light that God has called us to. So what man has decided to do for the last two years, two thousand years is twist the message because I told you before if I change the message, uh, I can change the power in the message. If I tell you one wrong thing about the gospel I'm actually changing the power that is connected to the gospel and Paul understood this. That's why he was willing to go to war. I'm going to submit to y'all one more time before I finish this series that we have to get out of this passivity that we're walking in as believers. Uh, we can no longer compromise as the church uh, and allow people to twist the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, and then walk around with boldly with crosses on our knees, crosses in our ears, crosses on our t-shirt and say that we are Christians again. People are coming in front of us and twist the gospel of Jesus Christ and as born again believers we're comfortable enough to uh, say that oh you know we just gotta love them. No I stand here to tell you today I will love you but I will not let you die on Jesus Christ. I will love you, but I will not let you push the gospel. Why? Because just like I love you, I love the unbeliever that needs to hear the gospel. So we have to get back to a place uh, where we're willing to stand against every false teaching uh, that would deny that Jesus came in the flesh. Uh, he was the Son of God. He is eternally God. Uh, he is the Savior of all of mankind. Uh, Paul was ready to refute these Judaizers and these false teachers and their attempt to twist and pervert and distort the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and what they were doing, they were deciding that they would tell people that you got to add works uh, unto your faith. In other words, watch this, you got to do something uh, to really be saved. And the last time I checked, I told y'all, you ain't got enough good works in you to get you saved. Uh, if you had enough good stuff in you to get you saved, uh, God would have never sent a good shepherd. Uh, but since you couldn't do it on your own, I got Anybody that really loved me preacher uh, and to testify, I done looked back over my life uh, and I realized if God didn't come get me, I wouldn't have never came. Uh, if God didn't tell me, I wouldn't have never came. Uh, if God didn't save me, I wouldn't have never got saved. Uh, it ain't got nothing to do with me because honestly, I didn't want God when God came and got me. You want me to really be honest with you? What I wanted for God was a change. What I didn't know is uh, what God calls a change is God also equips and empowers. Uh, I was like looking for everything that God gave me. I just wanted something different. Paul is saying to us, uh, we have to get back to this place to where we realize uh, your salvation is not connected to your works. Uh, if I could say it like the old reformer like Spurgeon, though I would say this, watch this. Uh, it's by faith alone that you are saved. But faith that saved ain't never alone. 
Okay, don't miss what I just said. I'm going to say it one more time. It's by faith alone you are saved, but faith alone, I said, but faith that it, uh, it's by faith alone you are saved, uh, but a faith that saved is never alone. What you mean, Pastor Man? I didn't want to get saved, but I will work since I'm saved. Uh, I cannot get this good news and hold it unto myself. I cannot get this gospel of Jesus Christ uh, and not be willing to go out into a dying world and tell them, uh, I know a man. I know a man. Uh, Paul says, no, we would not allow you to twist this gospel. I would not allow you to add works uh, unto uh, uh, your salvation. Uh, because he understood that the moment that you were doing that, you were destroying what we would call as believers the gospel of grace. Uh, the gospel of grace. Uh, yeah, slow down, man. You said 30 minutes. Slow down. I gotta, come on, man. Come on. How, how can I get this done? Uh, because this gospel of grace, y'all think the reason people are struggling I think the reason the church is in trouble because honestly, it sounds too good to be true. You know, like most stuff that sounds too good to be true, it's always something else connected to it, Rick. There's some kind of deception in it. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you, if it took me and God to do it, that ain't good news. Okay, y'all just miss it. Okay, they miss what I said. Uh, gospel meaning, you ain't getting another meaning. Good news. If it take me and God, that ain't good news. The good news is that God did it all by himself. Uh, he said, my own I stress on, I brought salvation unto me. Uh, so Paul wanted to make sure that they did not distort the gospel of grace, which declares that it is by grace you are saved through faith. And not in yourself. Uh, we just talking and y'all don't even know it. I asked God one day, I said, God, why come is it, is, it, is it grace through faith and not of myself? He said, because I ain't going to let nobody boast. Uh, because men are so wicked that uh, if you got yourself saved and he couldn't get himself saved, you'd be sitting over there looking at him, turning your nose up like you better than he is. Uh, when the reality of the matter, all of us are sinners saved by grace. Uh, don't look at nobody, but guess what? Your sin was no different than mine, even though it wasn't the same thing. Uh, and you needed the same Jesus that I needed. Uh, so God said it is not by works because then you might have a right to boast in front of the Lord. He says, no, it's by grace. Through faith, and not of ourselves. Uh, in this first installment of this series, y'all, we've seen how this great apostle Paul uh, talked to these Gentiles and responded to this false teaching and, and the things that were going on in Galatia. Uh, and another thing that he says to them, he said, I want y'all to understand that these people that are adding to the gospel, even though they call it another gospel, it's really not another gospel. Uh, because there's only one gospel so even though they called it that it was not a gospel and Paul wanted to make sure that they all understood this so Paul uh, declared uh, that those who twist the true gospel uh, watch this, this is the kind of stuff we don't want to do uh, those who twist the true gospel uh, that, tw that twist the word that perverted, that uh, misleading let that man be accursed Amen. Amen. So I, get quiet. Uh, I want y'all to hear me real quick and I am, I'm moving on, watch this uh uh, somewhere, somewhere down the road, uh, we started to believe that God had a gray area. <laughs> we started to believe that God accepts stuff that God said he just don't accept. Uh, you know, you hear the folks say, you know, man, I got one foot in church and one foot out. No, you don't. You either in church or you ain't, bro. I hate to bust you up. You either in the body or you outside the body. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to give you stuff they won't say to you. You know, like they tell you, man, I'm strengthening the fish. Now, ain't no fish to slide with. You either on this side of the fence huh, or you on that side of the fence. Huh? You either belong to Jesus huh, or you don't belong to Jesus. Huh? You either a child of God huh, or you a child of Satan. Huh? Ain't no gray area when it comes to God. So God says... Ain't no gray area when it comes to my preaching. You either gospel preaching or preaching the truth, or you're a false teacher and a false and a false presenter of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul said, no, ain't no gray area. He said, so you have to watch it. You have to make sure that when you hear those type of messages, I need you to understand that type of person is accursed. Uh, and if Paul declared that anybody that preached any other gospel is accursed, I submit to you this question. Why do we sit under people inside the churches knowing that it may be a curse on their life because they twist in God's word and will go to those churches repeatedly time after time and say, well, you know, I like it because they got good children ministry. But God ain't worried about children ministry. God's not worried about the salvation of a man because of Truth be told, watch this. Uh, there's a certain age that your child is going to 
work and saved anyway because he's not accountable. You worried about children and stop worried about the ministry that I'm trying to do inside of you. Paul God said, uh uh, I'm not concerned with all of those things. You can't go to church because you like the amenities. You got to make sure that you're in a body where they're preaching and teaching. You're unadulterated, uh, uncompromising, unwilling to uncompromise uh, the word of God. Uh, Paul, why you say that, Paul? Because Paul understood something. Uh, Paul said, a little living. Help me preach it in, bro, because they ain't talking to me this morning. A little living is the whole lump. What you mean? What you mean? Just a preacher of false teaching can make the whole sermon a lot. Okay, they don't talk to me on this side. Uh, ain't no such thing as a hand truth. It's a hand truth is actually a full lie. So, so Paul is saying, you can't be with them if they twist in any part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let that man be a curse. Uh, Paul said, no, you got to stay away from them. Uh, but Paul also uh, talked to them and said this because Paul understood something. That the moment you continue to listen to the false teaching and you start to enjoy this fake gospel and you depart, you start to depart the true gospel. And whenever you depart the gospel, you depart the God that gave the gospel. Uh, See, so you can't have God in a mixed up message. You either get God in the right message or you don't get God at all. And Paul was trying to make sure that this, this church understood. You have to be careful about what you eat. Uh, I remember I used to hear them old church folks say that it didn't make no sense. It didn't make sense to me one time, Sister Angel. They said, be careful where you get your bread. Okay, y'all ain't talking to me. Say that one more time. Uh, be careful when you get your bread. You got to make sure that what folk feed you is really what's inside this word. Uh, I'm looking for a church that'll be like the Bereans. They don't talk with just the Christ and the King. Don't take me at my word every Sunday. Soon as you leave here, you ought to go get your Bible. Uh, so let me see what pastor just preached. Uh, really line up with the scriptures. Uh, because the Bible ought to be so important to your life. Uh, the gospel ought to be so important uh, that the pastor know how to find a say so when it comes to what you heard or what the word is. Uh, put myself out of business. I told you, I put myself out of business. I want some, I want some Bible believers in there. Uh, he said, be careful because when you depart away from this gospel, uh, you're departing away from God. Uh, then the next then the next, then the next, message we dealt with uh, Paul and uh, this reception of this gospel that we are talking about. Uh, Paul lets us know something. Paul said, man, this message I got, uh, the reason it may sound different than the false teachers uh, because the message I got didn't come from me. Paul say man didn't invent it, uh, man didn't make it up. Uh, this message I got, it was the true message of Jesus Christ. And the reason they were trying to challenge Paul's message was because they understood something. If we can uh, challenge his message, then we can challenge his authority. And if we discredit his authority, we discredit him as an apostle. So Paul turns around and makes sure that the churches of Galatia knew and understood something. Uh, that this message I got, I received it just like the other apostles. Uh, I got my message straight from Jesus. And then you may ask yourself, well, Paul didn't walk with Jesus, but we talked about how Paul was only this way, one way on the, uh, to this place called Damascus, uh, on this way to arrest some Christians that Jesus arrested him. Uh, anybody that testified I've been arrested by Christ. Uh, God came into my life and has been holding me hostage. Uh, ever since he got a hold to me, I've been being kept uh, by God. Paul was arrested by Jesus uh, and now in that moment it gave Paul the authority and the power as an apostle to now give this message that he is sharing with these people. He wanted to make sure that they understood that the gospel I got Oh, I didn't receive it from me. Uh, it wasn't shown to me by me. Uh, I received this gospel strictly by Jesus. And since I got it straight from Jesus, it had the ability to do something. Uh, he starts to talk about how he, who he used to be in his past life. I want you to you don't get nothing else, get this. Whenever the gospel comes into your life for real, you will no longer be telling people who you are, uh, and it should not be connected with who you used to be. Your past life should no longer matter. I don't want joy. I don't take joy in who I used to be. I want God to get glory out of my life for who I am right now. Why? I have been raised to a newness of life. Uh, I'm not telling my testimony over and over to give the devil glory about where I came from. I want people to know, forget where I came from. I want to give God glory for where I'm going. Uh, Paul starts to talk about uh, how he received this gospel, y'all. Uh, he talks to us and he talks about how he received this message and what it did to his life and how it raised him into this newness of life. Now I am about halfway done. So as we
we approach our text this morning, we approach our text this morning, uh, Paul is now about to share with them or talk about a fact that he wanted them to understand. And what is that, Pastor Mac? That he had been separated unto the gospel. Amen. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna talk to me, man. I miss y'all. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I'm gonna say it again. He had been separated unto the gospel. What you mean, Pastor Mac? Uh, the word separation. Uh, in our text, it's funny, we hear separation and we think so many different things, but the word separation in our text is closely related to a word that we call predestined, uh, meaning to mark out beforehand, uh, to set boundaries, to already set things in place. Uh, the word separate uh, in the Greek literally means by God to set you aside for a particular function. Yeah, y'all ain't coming to have church this morning. I tell you, it'd be, it'd be the small stuff that bless me. Because you telling me that God looked at me one day, knowing everything I was going to do before I accepted Jesus, and he set me aside. Okay, y'all still ain't talking to me. For a particular function. I told him, we're going to come get you real quick. You remember growing up on the north side doing all the things you did. And folks would say to themselves, ain't no way that man working for the city and doing the stuff he did. Because some folks knew their past. What they didn't know is, uh, you're not walking in your purpose, uh, you're walking in God's given calling on your life. God looked at the side of you know what? Even with the low wire and the high and the listen to the drunk and easy I got a particular purpose and a function uh, that you will fall to the middle of the head and out on that side. But I got anybody that'll testify that can look back on their life and be real with themselves and say, I used to like to party. I used to like to dance. I used to like to drink. I used to get it in. And in doing all of that stuff, uh, God still had a purpose for me. God said, I'm a Take you from all of that, set you aside for a particular function. Okay, 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 where it Oh, you do know what function means, yeah, don't you? The way something operates on what it does. Uh, Paul said, I've been separated unto the gospel. Huh? Man, I, see, I've been trying to keep myself out of service. I like to pre Bible. Uh, but this part here messing me up. Because uh, watch this. The enemy set me aside for one purpose. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, sister, 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 uh, the devil had his plan for your life. Uh, the devil had the design that he had for you. But he didn't know since he's not omniscient. See, he knows something, but he don't know all things. What he did know is God said, I let the enemy have you for a season so that I can keep this for the rest of your life. God said to set you aside for a particular function. I'm going to use every hiccup that you had. I'm going to use every mess up that you made so that your now your future can be a blessing to somebody else. Uh, come on, back, you got to go home. Come on, back, I got to go home. I got 10 minutes. I'm going to do this. Uh, he said, I set you aside uh, for a particular function. Uh, yes, God sets us aside to perform and operate according to his plan. Man, I really could get stuck right there for real. Because uh, I like to teach doctrine. I need you to hear what I just said to you. God sets us apart to perform and operate according to his plan. Uh, come on, Holy Ghost, you got to get off of it now because I'm about to get stuck for real. Because uh, now I'm telling you, man, when I look at this mess I, I used to be in, when I look at it, when I think about everything I did, I'm telling you what I know I ought to be dead. I ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. I played Russian roulette as much as I could. And every time I got to the place where the bullet was in the chamber, God would make that boy misfire. Why? Because God. I got a purpose and a plan for your life. Oh, God sets you aside. God sets you aside. I know this congregation because I know it. It's about 10 or 20 people that ain't here today that I know if God can have a purpose on their life. Boy, everybody might not be like that. But there's some folk in this church that have been through enough hell the way you ought to be sitting at JPS right now in an insane asylum with a straight jacket on and a rocket truck sitting up talking to yourself. But if there's anybody that testify, he's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. But I should have lost my mind since I was set aside for a purpose. Oh, 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 Lamus turn, y'all, and I'm gonna move on because I'm getting stuck. I don't want to get stuck, but Lamus turn, y'all ready for it? Lamus turn, watch this. Watch this, here it is. Lamus turns his ditch. I was wiped out. I was done. 
They gave up on me. I gave up on me. What I didn't know is God hadn't even yet started on me. And since God had yet started on me, even when I quit myself, God didn't quit me. Anybody just denied? I gave up on me one day. I just threw in the towel on myself. And when I quit myself, God did not quit me. Uh, he says, Paul said, I've been separated, set apart. Uh, but now this gets this get personal for me. Uh, he said, but I've been set apart for a reason, for the gospel. Okay, y'all been set no more. Uh, I've been set aside for the gospel. Now that gets, that gets me happy. Now you're not a preacher, so let me give it to you in a way to bless you. He even set you apart so that you can hear the gospel. Because he knew the gospel and get you saved. But as for me, this old wretch up there, he set me aside not to just hear the gospel. But he gave me a call to preach the gospel. So I'll say he set me aside for a purpose. He set me aside for the gospel. Oh, separation. Oh, separation. Set me aside. So that I do his plan yeah. and his purpose. Oh, yeah. Now, when we do Bible and go home, because I know the pastor got to preach Bible. I'm in verse 15. I'm in verse 15. You ready for it? Come to the first point. I said, I want y'all to notice something. Notice the pleasure connected to the separation. Okay, don't miss it. Come here, y'all. Don't miss it. Come here. Come talk to me now. I said, the pleasure in the separation. Uh, here's the pleasure. It's in the text. Watch this. But when it pleased God. Okay, y'all just fix y'all sound on me. Uh, the pressure in the separation. Uh, pressure means it pleads. Uh, when it pleads God, what, is it, what do you mean? Uh, God found joy. The word pressure there literally means to take pressure in, uh, to have joy in doing something. Amen. Uh, the pressure in the separation. Uh, God took pressure. God found joy. And separate Paul yeah. unto himself. Right, right, right. Amen. Okay, y'all, come on. Man, I'll be teaching uh, online and for stuff, stuff like this, and people they be like, man, my pastor don't preach. This is the kind of stuff that gets you free. Because I want y'all to hear this again. God took pleasure in separating you unto himself. Okay, I can tell y'all still ain't got it. Uh, here it comes. God found joy in not setting you aside when you was good. Okay, y'all be talking. God found Christ just for uncles. Not in setting you apart when you was holy. Okay, y'all ain't talking on that side. God found joy. Not in separating you when you was righteous. God found joy in separating you when you was a sinner. But y'all ain't talking. God said, I found joy in taking something uh, that didn't nobody else want. Uh, everybody else had no desire for you. Uh, they didn't want you. They weren't craving you because they saw your sin. Uh, but thanks be to God, uh, he looked past my faults uh, and he saw my needs. Uh, he looked at me and said, uh, I'm going to set you a God found pleasure in taking me unto himself. Uh, woo, that the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is my shot moment. This is my shot moment. This is the reason that blesses me is because I found something. See, I studied Bible. I studied Bible. God said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Uh, so what that means is God took pleasure in coming to get me because God knew I was so deep in my sin I would never come get him. Why y'all should have just said something like that? And since I won't go come get him, God said, don't worry about it, sister. Don't worry about it, brother. You ain't got to come to me. I'm going to step out of the here. I'm going to come out of glory. And I'm going to come get you. He did it in the man called Jesus. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, all this body trying to get out on me. I put a push, push, push. I said, uh, he said, uh, I find a pleasure in calling you. But here's my point. Uh, he said, I find a pleasure in calling you. But what I find even more pleasure in is when you accept the call. Why can I tell you I know this is? Uh, God says, I find pleasure in setting you aside and making you my own. This is what I love about it. Paul say, when it pleased God. Meaning there was a time that it happened. Y'all ain't talking, y'all ain't talking. Uh, I need somebody to hear me. 
This for anybody watching and anybody here. Don't let folk rush you into your purpose and your calling. Shout <laughs> over Because what I find out is everything has to operate in God's timetable. And here is the problem with that. We operate in 24 hours, seven days a week. God don't operate in 24 hours. A thousand years is as a day of God. And a day is as a thousand years. God say my time ain't your time. But what I will tell you is my time is always the perfect time. God say I'm always come when I'm supposed to come. Anybody that testify like the whole saints, he may not always come when I'm coming. But he always on time. What I'm trying to say to you, watch this. Here it comes, Sister Shonda. God didn't save you a moment too early or a moment too late. But God brought salvation. That's why the book say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God said, your salvation might not happen when Big Mama wanted it. It might not took place when Lady Mama wanted it to happen. But it did happen when it was supposed to happen. Uh, 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 oh, I see she says, uh, uh, I separate each other to me. It pleases me when you accept the call. Amen. Why? Amen. Because I accepted the call by faith. I'm going to tell you a text. I'm going to text. Watch this. Hebrews 11 6 says this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God says, so when I called you, you came. And you accept me by faith and please me. Why? God say, because I love it when you give back belong to me. Okay, y'all just y'all shout on me. He says, watch this, I tell to every man the measure of faith. So God says, since I gave you the faith to get saved, I please when you take that same faith. Don't put it in Buddha, don't put it in Allah, don't put it in confusion, don't put it in Joseph's spirit. He said, when you take that same faith and say, Here it is, Father, you gave it to me, and now back into your hands, I commit my faith. By faith, you have been saved. He said, it is something about when you use your faith, because you there's another thing about faith. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Faith functions yeah. by obedience. Folk like to tell you they got faith. Right. But don't tell me you got faith. Uh. Show me you got faith. Yeah. Uh. You know, people will tell you anything. Yeah. Uh, but when you show me, uh, I got to believe Amen. what I see with my eyes. Amen. He Paul looked and said, but when it pleased God to separate me. Amen. Amen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Amen. Come on, man, I gotta go. He says, uh, when it pleased God who separated me, here come my poet from my mother's womb. Okay, y'all, y'all just. Thanks, us, uh, thanks, us, we right here to uh, You know what I found out for his lady? Uh, the reason I'm still living is because my calling came before my coming. Okay, y'all just get you out this. Okay, keep that in case said one more time. In case you missed it, that man went too fast. My calling came before my coming. <laughs> before Shirley and Johnny got together and decided they was going to make me. My calling was already on me. Okay, y'all. Uh, 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 uh. I just heard somebody ask me, like, man, what you tripping, man? Where you be getting this stuff from? Uh, that's what he said, my calling was from the womb. Uh, one day he looked at this, uh, this young boy uh, by the name of Jeremiah. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 1 and 4, he looked here, young man. Uh, he tells him, watch this. He said, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the bed. Before the embryo, uh, before the biblical cord and all the embryo of fluid, all this stuff, before any of that, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. Thank you, sister. Now, can I stop and pause real quick? I told they ain't gonna like me. This my pastor back pro life. You ain't gotta like me, but now I ain't for abortion. I know it'd be different things that take place, but you know what I found out? Life don't start with the heartbeat. Okay, I just messed somebody up. Uh, life, life don't start at conception. Life started with the father. Okay, y'all ain't gonna help me here. He said, before I phone thee, before I talk about before you were in the bed, he said, I knew thee. Well, I feel a 
boy running out of here. He didn't come with uh, the word new there is the same Hebrew word that they used that when Adam slept with Eve. Okay, y'all just missed it. So he's speaking about intimacy, knowing the secret things about you. He said, before I formed thee, I was already intimate with you. Y'all need to try to hear me real quick. God knew every hair on your head. God knew every step you would take. God said, I was intimate with you before your parents was intimate with each other. Let me help you. I gotta get up out of here. He says, I formed thee. Let me read the two ways. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You ready? And before you came forth, so before you came out the womb, this is the text, I sanctified thee. What if I told you sanctified is the same word as separate? Uh, so before you came out the womb, I set you apart. Watch this. What well, about God? You, I set you apart and anointed you before you even knew what an anointing was. He said, I set me apart and I ordained thee as a prophet to the nations. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, come on. Come on, I need y'all here. Uh, y'all gotta forgive me. This, this pastor, uh, a literary struggle. This, this one, like my son, Buzz Mama, hit me. Uh, how, uh, how can. He called me and called me to be a prophet to the nations before I'm old enough to speak. Uh, here's what I really love about it. when God separates before the womb. You ready for it? Because folk, I'm telling you, folk don't give you this kind of doctrine. What that means is if Jeremiah wanted to choose another occupation. Okay, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh, if Jeremiah said, now I just want to go down here and be a fisherman like my father. Couldn't go nowhere else. And he looked and said, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be a potter. I'm just gonna work in the field. Okay, y'all ain't talking. I, I, I had made my mind up that I was gonna be a career hustler. But God said, Oh man, what you thought you was gonna be is not what I created you to be. And what I know about God, once he called and say something, it ain't a devil in hell, Satan himself, like you that strong enough to stop it from happening. There are some people that sit in this church that are fussing in place in their life. This is good to me. Uh, if I had to pick anything in life, Rick, I'm going to be honest. If they gave me a list and said, name me your top ten things, I wouldn't have never got to a preacher. Uh, uh, and if I ever got to a preacher, definitely wouldn't have got to a pastor. But thanks be to God that my hand when I was a little baby looked at me one day and said, my baby part going to be a preacher. She had tapped into my destiny before I even knew what my destiny was. And since God set me apart, here it comes. When I was getting drunk and getting high, I was still God's preacher. When I was in the club and party, I was still God's preacher. When I was living and running, I was still God's preacher. The problem is, God knew it. I just had to find it out. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I gotta get out of here. That's just, uh, he say, the, the pleasure in the separation is God did all of this for himself. You just get to enjoy the benefits of it. But watch, watch this. Now, now let's look at the provision in the separation. Uh, T. Smack, I'm talking to her. Uh, this, this book, watch what he say, Q. Separated me and called me by his grace. Well, so y'all don't know this y'all for real. Uh, sister, sister Elkins, I'm glad that grace is the provision that's given me. Watch this. Uh, not because not only is grace needed for salvation, grace is needed for service. You can't serve God if you ain't got the grace on your life to do it. Uh, uh, I think the scripture says it this way. Watch this. Let everybody minister according to the measure of grace that's on them. Okay, y'all still ain't got it. Y'all still ain't got it. One more. Paul looked one day and he said, I labored more than all the apostles. I did more work. I did more preaching. I did more fasting. I did more praying. I'm talking about sin and everything. I did all this stuff. And then he thought about it. He said, uh-uh. But not I. But the grace 
Tell us on my life. Uh, 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 I wake up, get to come to church Amen. on Sunday mornings and preach. Unless anybody in here is perfect, y'all all gonna be shouting. Because you can tell people. I'm a born again believer. I'm a church going Christian. I'm saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. I read my Bible. I love the Lord. You get to tell all folk all that stuff and what you didn't know. The only reason you get to do it is because God can grace you to be able to do it. Amazing grace. How sweet it is. Uh, it is something about grace uh, that makes it so amazing. Uh, because I told y'all before, not only is grace favor, but it's divine influence. Uh, so you ready? You ready? You ready? Watch this. The grace that's on my life, Sister Hamilton, got me to this moment uh, because of His grace. Uh, Y'all was there, and you left right before the chaos broke out. Okay, y'all gotta talk to him on that side. I see. You got friends that you grew up with. They went this way, and you went that way. They life been a living hell, and your life been blessed. It really didn't have nothing to do with you. God was behind the scenes, pushing you towards this way. Because God said, down that street, it's not your destiny. Down that street, it's not your purpose. Even though they wanted you to go with them, they tried to influence you to go with them. What they didn't know is, they influence when started in God's influence. It's some people in this church, and some people that's watching me, you were about to make some decisions uh, that would erect your life uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, divine intervention took place, uh, and God influenced you to go the other way. Uh, uh, come on. I ain't make 30, but I'm going to make 45, and I'm going to go home. Oh, I said, he said, uh, the, uh, the grace, uh, this grace uh, was the provision I gave you. Uh, uh, this grace was the provision. Hear me. Grace kept you uh -huh. until you got to your destiny in time. Amen. 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 Don't ever think Amen. it was anything you needed. Right, 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 right. Don't ever think you sitting here because of, it was something you did or something somebody else did. Right. It was because of the grace that was on your life. Amen. Right, right, right. Oh, last one, I'm finished. Amen. Last one, I said. So not only has he talked about the pleasure in the separation, the provision of the separation, then Paul said, I gotta make sure I, I show with y'all the proclamation connected to the separation. Yeah, yeah. Right. This might be my favorite part. Uh, I'm gonna read verse 16, y'all, I'm gonna be quiet. Amen. He says, uh, uh, verse 15 is like this, he called me by his grace. For what? To reveal his son yeah. in me. Uh -huh. Well, y'all so. Uh, 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 <clears throat> this is the moment that I do like some other translations. Because other translations say to reveal his son to me. <laughs> he kept me so that he can reveal his son in me. So that he can reveal his son to me. <laughs> uh oh, here, here comes the shot moment. I tell people all the time, I said, he didn't save you for you. That's right. Well, we got too many seven Christians for me. I'm going to say it one more time. He didn't save you for you. Uh, that friend that I just told you about that went to some wrong way, he say, I kept you so you can go back and get him. Okay, y'all got to talk to me. Y'all got to talk to me. Uh, it's in the text. I preach God in the text. Watch what he say. To reveal his son to me, here come the proclamation, that I might preach. Uh, uh, preach uh, is, is where we get the word evangelize from. See, Paul had an evangelistic mindset. Paul said, understood something, though, and I need you to get it. We probably don't preach Jesus because we ain't allow God to reveal Jesus to us and in us. You don't talk about what you don't know. Uh, Paul says, he set me aside. He gave me grace so he can introduce me to his son. 
because the separation was connected to my calling. My calling was to be a pastor unto the Gentiles. So Paul says, he calls me, and now once he calls me, he shows me Jesus. Uh, so that when I go and preach, uh, I ain't preaching myself. Uh, I ain't preaching ideologies. Uh, I ain't preaching my own concepts. Uh, I ain't preaching no other gospel. This when y'all pass to go home. Uh, this is why I say they don't like me. I ain't trying to be deeper. Y'all pastor ain't trying to be smarter. I'm sorry if you don't get big words. Uh, I'm sorry if you ain't moved. Uh, because I feel like Paul, uh, God introduced me to Jesus. Uh, so I ain't got nothing but one thing to tell y'all this morning. Uh, I determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ uh, and him crucified. Uh, so the Jews are something they got. So the Greek school is I stopped by and tell you this morning uh, that it's married baby that still get people son. Uh, they say it's the, it's the young boy that was Joseph's son. Uh, the old little carpenter that still get people saved. Uh, it's the man that one day they decided uh, to walk down the road of Cyrone called a Via Della Rosa. March him up a hill called Calvary. Put him on an old rugged cross. Uh, lift him up high. But if he said, uh, if I be lifted up, uh, I for all men uh, up to me. Uh, I ain't trying to tell people. Uh, I ain't trying to be charismatic. Uh, I'm trying to get somebody saved. Uh, I can tell me that uh, I'm going to preach Jesus Christ uh, and him crucified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul said, Paul said, look, y'all. Paul said, honestly, ain't nobody deeper than me. When it came to the law, I'm at the top of the totem pole. And I determined to do one thing. I can see it right now. Paul, what is it like to be with Camille? I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. Paul, what does it feel like to preach at Athens? I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. Now, Paul, what does it feel like to know seven languages? I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. Then what does it feel like to be a Pharisee of Pharisees? I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. Pastor Baker, what does it feel like to leave VIP? I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. What does it feel like? To be a husband now and a good father. I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. What does it feel like to pastor and lead a church? I don't know, but Jesus got crucified. I determined. I made my mind up. I'm going to ride with King Jesus. Y'all to the wheels fall off. Let the man go to church, over.